Hero Quest was originally a fantasy adventure board game released by Milton Bradley in conjunction with Games Workshop in 1989. The game system developed for Hero Quest was that of a basic role playing game that allowed a games master, or commonly known as a dungeon master, to create dungeons for the other players to explore and cooperate together. Hero Quest, deep inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. This is Hero Quest, the fantasy adventure game where winning means mastering the arts of combat. I'll use my broadsword and magic. Fire of wrath. Discover traps and enemies, uncover secret doors. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. With the success of the board game, Gremlin Graphics and a license from Games Workshop produced a 3D isometric version of Hero Quest for a number of computer platforms including the 48K and the 128K ZX Spectrum in 1991. Unlike many games of the period that were simply supplied in a cassette case, Hero Quest was distributed in a beautiful cardboard box featuring artwork from the original board game on the front and screenshots from various computer platforms on the rear. You were looking at the copy of Hero Quest for the ZX Spectrum from the Retro Attic Man Cave collection. On picking up the box, you were greeted with the words, a computer adventure in a world of magic on top of the box. The images on the rear give an idea of the gameplay across the various computer platforms, including the ZX Spectrum. The beautiful artwork sets the scene for the game and was painted by British illustrator Les Edwards, who had a prolific career producing graphic novels, film design and book jacket illustrations, including Conan, Discworld and the Fighting Fantasy series. The box components include a cassette containing the game Hero Quest, in this instance for the ZX Spectrum 128K on side 1 and a 48K version on side 2. A very comprehensive 62 page instruction booklet is included with the rear written in French and the front half in English. It covers loading instructions for the Amstrad, Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum computers, along with rules of play such as movement, shooting, combat, magic, searching for treasure and example screenshots. There are a total of 14 adventures included with the game which are listed in the Quests of Morcar. There are some special notes that clarify a few points in the instruction booklet and a card advertising an interactive Robocop telephone game which has long been discontinued. Think it over creeps before you dial the number. It sold for 10.99 as a premium game back in 1991 when it was released with many other games sold at the time being a third of that price. The quality of the product and the presentation reflects this high cost and as it was shipped with 14 adventures this would provide many hours of gameplay making it good value for money. I think this is a great retro game for the period, surprisingly immersive and can still be enjoyed today. The pocket size instruction booklet supplied with the game is a total of 30 pages in length and is a sense of occasion as Gremlin Graphics presents Hero Quest on the inside cover. The Chronicles of Law Tome provide a great background story and introduce the four heroes Rogar the Barbarian, Durgin the Dwarf, Ladril the Elven Fighter and Tellor the Wizard and their quest to battle the legions of Morkar. The loading instructions cover the 48K and 128K ZX Spectrum Spectrum Plus 2 and Spectrum Plus 3, along with the Amstrad and Commodore 64 computers. It explains how to create the four characters to be used in the game and how the computer will play the evil wizard Morkar and the various monsters the adventurers will encounter. It details the loading and saving of characters so they can be used in the game or on future quests. Buying of equipment such as weapons and armour with the gold and jewels acquired in adventures is explained in detail before going into the rules of play, which are closely based on the Hero Quest board game. Order of play is straightforward, with each of the four characters being able to perform two actions per turn, such as move, fight, search or cast a spell. 
Once complete, the computer then moves and fights with each monster controlled by the evil wizard Morkar. Note that only characters are able to open doors, and combat is split into two stages, attacking and defending. Once combat is instigated, the computer calculates the results based on abilities that generate combat dice that are then randomly generated. The elf and the wizard are able to use magic instead of performing a regular combat attack. Overall control of the game is best played via joystick, moving the pointer and selecting the various icons displayed around the bottom of the main play screen. The player must also be on the lookout for secret doors, traps and pits, which makes searching a key action for the characters. Upon completing a quest, the characters can buy more equipment with the gold and jewels found, and then save their progress ready for the next quest. All 14 playable quests of Morkar are listed, from Quest 1 that is really a training adventure for the player, through to Return to Barak Tor where the characters must defeat the Witch Lord to prevent the forces of chaos overrunning the land. The Book of Magic is devised into air, fire, earth and water spells that are only available to use by the Elf and the Wizard. Along with an inventory of the weapons and armour that can be found or purchased during the game, along with special equipment such as magic weapons, armour and talismans. Certainly a comprehensive set of instructions that allow you to play here request and act as a reference if required during the game. The art of Les Edwards played a great part in allowing the game players of both the board game and the computer game immerse themselves in a fantasy world of sword and sorcery. From beautiful cover art from the Fighting Fantasy Gamebook series, such as The Caverns of the Snow Witch, published by Wizard Books. Along with the amazing Daggers of Darkness for the Puffin Fighting Fantasy Gamebook, written by Ian Livingston. The Ghoul is an iconic picture first used on the Atlas video cover of Eddie Romero's film The Twilight People, but is more commonly known for appearing on a 1979 edition of The White Dwarf, issue 19. Messenger of Huvastu was used for the cover of Andrew Uft's novel published by ABP, and was also used in a Games Workshop game, Valley of the Four Winds. Conan the Victorious was a cover painted for a novel by Richard Jordan, published by Sphere, being the 26th book in the Conan series. Along with the striking painting Conan the Unconquered, again commissioned by Sphere for another novel by Robert Jordan. The HeroQuest Ogre Pack was a cover for one of the add-on packs to the HeroQuest board game, which was released in 1989. Return of the Witch Lord was another expansion for the HeroQuest board game, but was also used for the computer game expansion pack produced by Gremlin Graphics, and featured on the 1990 cover of White Dwarf issue 130. The main HeroQuest box art painted by Les Edwards is simply stunning and remains an iconic piece of artwork to this day. Now let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Quest 1 – The Maze This will be your final test before you set forth on the real quests. Be sure to use all the skills that you have been taught. You must attempt to find your way out. Several monsters have been placed in the maze they will try to stop you, so take care. Whoever finds his way out first will be rewarded with a hundred gold coins. This may be used to buy equipment for the adventures to come. The game starts with the barbarian searching the corridors and finding some gold coins. After using the pointer to move the barbarian along the corridor, the next character icon is selected and control moves to the dwarf. The Dwarf is also successful in searching the corridor. 
He then moves along the corridor until he comes across a doorway. The dwarf opens the door using the key icon. Then using the map icon the room and its contents are revealed. As control moves to the elf, note that you can see each character's name, health, gold and movement points in the top left of the main screen. With control passing to the wizard, looking at the top left of the screen you can see the gold increasing as he successfully searches the corridor and then movement points reducing down to zero as he moves along the corridor. Selecting the next character icon passes control to the evil wizard Morkar and any movement that computer makes is shown on the map. Once Morkar has finished moving, the next turn begins and the Barbarian starts with two actions again in which he chooses to move and search, increasing his total gold along the way. As control passes to the Dwarf, he decides to enter the room where the map clearly showed an Orc on guard. Once in the room, he manoeuvres around the Orc and prepares for combat. Selecting the sword icon, the map view is presented. The Dwarf selects the Orc to attack and the computer calculates the outcome of the combat. In this instance, the Orc is killed. Once the exit from the maze has been located, the quest ends when all remaining characters leave via the stairs. Moving on to quest 2, the rescue of Sir Ragnar, all the characters start in the same location with any items from the previous quest, but not the gold, this must be used to purchase items between quests or is lost. The Barbarian starts the turn and the characters quickly encounter an Orc and a Goblin in the adjoining room. This is where you can see the strategy element of the game developing, as all the characters work together to kill the monsters. After killing the Orc, the Barbarian opens the door and checks the next room on the map. Then the turn passes to the Dwarf who moves into the room with the remaining goblin. However, the dwarf does not attack the goblin. The turn passes to the elf, who moves into the room to join the barbarian and the dwarf. The elf manoeuvres around the remaining goblin and then initiates combat and kills the goblin. With the threat of the Orc and the Goblin removed from the room, the turn passes to the Wizard, who can now safely join the rest of the characters in the room. Again, selecting the next character icon passes control to Morkar, and any movement the computer makes is shown on the map. Led by the Barbarian, the characters now continue the quest, the rescue of Sir Ragnar. If you enjoyed playing the 14 quests of Morkar, then an expansion pack called Return of the Witch Lord was available, providing another 10 adventures for your previously saved characters to play. However, the evil Morkar your adversary in Hero Quest was but a child by comparison with the Witch Lord, whose ambitions stretched to control the entire empire, dwelling in the mountains of Kalos, looking out over the plains of death, it's in the labyrinth of the mountain that your quests take place. Many of the computer magazines of the era published hints and tips to assist players of Hero Quest. 
These included maps of the dungeons and strategies to use in order to progress through the maze of corridors and rooms, often showing locations of treasure and items to collect, along with secret doors plus traps and pits to avoid. In 2020, Hasbro launched a crowdfunding project to remake the classic HeroQuest board game. If successful, the game will aim to ship in 2021 with a revised version of the iconic box art originally painted by Les Edwards. Heed well my words, for I am Mentor, guardian of Lord Tome. I come with great warnings for decades. The shadows were gone, but just as darkness follows light, shadows have a way of returning. Many centuries ago, Zargon was my apprentice. He worked hard and learned quickly, but impatience devoured him. He desired to learn the ancient and dangerous secrets of dread magic. Once he learned these secrets, he fled. When I found him, he was greatly changed. He pledged his allegiance to the dread forces of evil, using magic as a shortcut to unlimited power. After a lengthy battle, he retreated to the northern dread wastes. There, he strengthened his forces and once again prepares for war. Zargon has returned, but light always follows darkness. And the four of you hold the key to saving the realm. The Barbarian, the mightiest of warriors. The Wizard, the wielder of arcane power. The Dwarf, resilient fighter and expert craftsman. The Elf, master of both the sword and magic. Your quest is to put an end to Zargon's reign of evil once and for all. The quest is calling. Is calling. calling. There are now multiple ways to enjoy Hero Quest. You can buy the new version to be produced by Hasbro in 2021. You can try to secure a second-hand copy of the 1989 classic Hero Quest board game produced by MB Games in conjunction with Games Workshop. Although my favourite option would be to play Hero Quest on the 1991 retro 8-bit computer game on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. There is something still quite appealing playing Hero Quest on a retro computer, and many hours can be lost playing this immersive fantasy adventure game. Hope you enjoyed this review of Hero Quest for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, brought to you by the Retro Attic Man Cave. <laughs>